Good morning. Make you guys say it twice. Do you have to excuse me if I do need moments of water sometimes? Uh, I will have to take a drink. So I have been working on a cold for, I'm finally done with it, but for like a month it's been. It's been crazy, but praise the Lord, I am, I am through it. Um, it's great to be up here this morning, um, to be able to uh, dig deeper into a passage that I have grown to love this last two weeks as I've been been studying and looking into it um, as we talk about Psalm 100. And, you know, it's a great to, to be a, a fitting passage after this week as we talk about self-control. Just kidding. All right, you guys need to wake up. We had some awesome music. The words were amazing for what we are actually going to talk about as we talk about Thanksgiving. Um, that's what Psalm 100 actually covers. Um, my name is Pastor David, the associate pastor here at West Hill. I am not the senior pastor. Um, we are very thankful for Pastor Aaron to be able to take this time, well-deserved time, off today and his family. Um, but I, I'm excited to be up here. I don't get to preach too often, uh, which is fine. That's not what I was called to do here at West Hill. I, I am called to do it every now and then and to, to help out in that way. And I do love to be up here when it, when it is my chance. Uh, again, it is a privilege to be able to do this, but I prefer teaching over preaching. So I'd much rather be in the classroom setting and doing that. So sometimes that comes off when I'm up here, but uh, excited to go through Psalm 100 with you guys. Uh, I hope you did have a wonderful Thanksgiving this last Thursday. Uh, we do have many traveling still and coming back. So we do pray for their safety. Um, as I looked at, at Pastor Aaron's sermon layout for this, this year, I did realize that he was not going to cover Thanksgiving. I don't know if that's because he was saving it for me for this day. But uh, as I prayed and, and sought the Lord out about what I should be talking about today, um, obviously that came to my mind. And as I searched out some scriptures and what to preach about, Psalm 100 was one of the first ones. And I'm like, oh, this is amazing. This is perfect. Uh, so I, uh, the five verses that it covers, uh, just an awesome five verses. And excited to go over that that with you guys. So. Uh, the title I landed on today was Joyful Thanksgiving, and it kind of goes along with our theme for this year of joyful living. That's been our theme for the whole year. That's what the, the banner out in the foyer uh, says is joyful living. So today we're going to talk about joyful Thanksgiving as we go through Psalm 100. Uh, it's interesting to think at this, right at this time of the year, we, we have a holiday that allows us to take a break and to get together with our family allows us to be surrounded by loved ones, um, be able to, it reminds us to give thanks. Uh, we have the, the holiday to celebrate because the, what the, the pilgrims and the Native Americans and be able to, to take, have that feast as they gave thanks to God for providing for them. Um, and amongst all of that, amongst all of that Thanksgiving, it's turned into shopping, which that's how it is in this country. U.S. holiday, time to shop. U.S. holiday, more shopping. Got Christmas coming up, shop. Easter, let's go shopping. So, which it's fun. You know, I enjoy all the deals too. And trust me, when it comes to electronics, I am, I always have to ask Emily first, can I get this? Should I get that? Um, I, I definitely have an issue with that uh, when it comes to electronics and shopping. But I, the reason I like this topic too, though, and why it lines up so well is um, we, we don't need a holiday. And I don't need to tell you guys this, but we don't need a holiday to tell us to be thankful, right? Thank you. We don't need a holiday to tell us to be thankful. Uh, and we don't need to, a holiday to, uh, to show us how to be thankful either. We have God's word for that. I mean, this, this is a topic that is covered throughout God's Word. Actually, the last time I preached on Thanksgiving, or on the topic of Thanksgiving, was in 2016. I do have all my sermons saved, so I went through just to make sure I wasn't copying myself. And I actually did a survey of Thanksgiving throughout the Bible. That's what I, what I preached on. And I'm sure you guys remember that, right? A lot of you weren't even here. That's okay. I could have redone that sermon, but I didn't. Um, but 
it just, it's one of those things that we are always able to be thankful, and we see that example throughout Scripture. And I think Psalm 100 gives us a huge reason and shows us how we can be thankful all the time and who we prioritize as being thankful for, and obviously that's God. Um, so as we get into that, let's go ahead and pray first, and then we'll dig in, and we're just going to go verse by verse and talk about um, the Scripture and and what, what this has for us when it comes to Thanksgiving. And it's only five verses. Can you believe that? This is not like Pastor Aaron where we're doing 40-something verses. It is only five. So no. let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for this day. We thank you for this time, um, this time of the year. We, we do appreciate being able to be reminded and to take a break and to slow down to be thankful. And so, Lord, as we're, we're here today, I pray that, that we would remember why we can be thankful the true reason that we have um, this thankfulness in our hearts and where it should be directed towards and how we can use it, Lord. And we just ask uh, for you to bless this time that we have together. And Lord, that it be your words and not mine. Lord, we thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Drink. All right. Psalm 100. Let's read it together. It says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. So as we read this, I want you to keep thinking about how do we have joyful thanksgiving? And notice how I didn't say a joyful thanksgiving. That's over. Thanksgiving is over. So how do we continue to have joyful thanksgiving? How can we be thankful at all if we don't first recognize who we should be thank giving thanks to first? And I think that's what I love most about the psalm is it gets into that quite a bit of who we should be giving thanks to first. Um, this psalm would have been known really well to the Israelites. Just to give a little background to it, it focuses on, how, on God and how we can respond to him as well. Uh, the heading on the psalm actually means more literally thank offering. With the context of the psalm, and, it, and it's also linked to Leviticus, many commentators see it as uh, a title that should be giving or a title that is Thanksgiving Sacrifice. So a Thanksgiving Sacrifice. They believe it was probably sung in connection with temporal sacrifices. Obviously not the only one they would have sung for that, but oftentimes um, after this was written, they would have used it uh, on their way to the temple or in progress for the temple and giving sacrifices, a Thanksgiving Sacrifice. Uh, verse 1 not only talks to uh, Jerusalem and the Israelites, but it says all the earth. Now, we're not in verse 1 yet. I'm just pointing it out. There's no exception here. So as we read through Psalm 100, we have, uh, yes, it is directed toward the Israelites, towards Jerusalem, and it's a psalm for them, but also the, the concepts in it, uh, the things that we learn, we can learn from it as well. There's obviously lessons for it for us as well. It's lessons that we see throughout Scripture. Um, again, it is five Amazing, beautiful verses packed uh, into one little chapter, and I, and I love it. So let's start with verses 1 and 2. Uh, the first point that I have is have a joyful attitude. So as we're, as we're reading these, you need to think, how can I have a joyful attitude? Verses 1 and 2 say, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. We, we have already done that today. That's what I love about the songs and what Andrew picked out. Um, a lot of the, the words that were in the songs that we sung today were points that come from these scriptures as well, uh, whether it was on purpose or not. I mean, it doesn't matter. Those, those themes are in there. And the, some of the words that we were singing up there, I'm like, oh, that's verse 1. Oh, that's verse 3. Oh, that's verse 5. Um, so it's neat just to see that, that in there. Um, make a joyful noise to all the earth, to the Lord, all the earth, as repeated through the Psalms. Uh, the closest one being Psalm 98 4. So it is a phrase that you see oftentimes. The meaning here for make a joyful noise is to give a glad shout. 
Anybody shout today, this morning? Give a joyful, hey, there we go. Amen. Wow. <laughs> so that's, that's what it is. It's almost like loyal subjects would do this as their king approaches the throne, as they, the king is arriving in front of them. There's a joyful shout. And you are, you are coming to the Lord and giving praise to him with a joyful shout. Um, why, I, I guess my question is, why wouldn't we want to do this? And again, not that you have to shout, but why wouldn't you want to come and sing praises to God? What an, what an awesome thing that we're able to do. Um, so again, not, all, not only are the people of Israel called to do this, but all the earth. We are all called to have a joyful attitude, to make a joyful noise to the Lord. And you, uh, we see this connection in the New Testament as well. Hebrews 13, 15, which I have for you. Hebrews 13, 15 says, Through him, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Through him, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of the lips that acknowledge his name. Uh, the one key word in there, continually, continually, continually. How do we continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God? Uh, this doesn't mean that we always have to be walking around singing to God and praising him. Uh, as I'm writing my notes and stuff, I'm like, oh, this could be like a musical. We, could, we should be walking around like a musical, always singing. Now, this does happen in my house sometimes where we will just walk around and everything becomes a song, all right? Those aren't necessarily praises to God, but it just made me think of that. Uh, that that's not what it's to talking about here necessarily. It, it's, again, that idea of having a joyful attitude of always giving praise and thankfulness to God as you go about your day. Do we have the mindset, the joyful attitude throughout the day? That's the continualness as we go throughout our day. Um, this worked in perfectly. Friday night, we were heading over to Seth and Dana's to hang out with them, our family, and they don't even know that they made it into my sermon. It's such a privilege. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> They're like, it depends on what it's about. So we were heading over to their house. Um, that's all it is about you guys. And before I left, I told... I told Emily it would be really cool to see some of the lights that people have already put up. And mostly because I wanted J Judah to see them. Judah's at the age where he's starting to notice those things more. Where I can talk to him and be like, hey, are you excited to see the lights on the house? And, he, and he'll respond and say yes. And I, and I just thought, oh, that would be awesome. But as we, le as we left and we're pulling out and heading down Revere here, I completely forgot about it. I mean, that's not abnormal for me. It just completely left my mind, and we're heading down, and we get to sand run, and I just took a right. And normally, I wouldn't take a right. Normally, to get to their house, I would keep going straight and get down to Ridgewood and get on to Jacoby. Now, I'm telling everybody where you live. <laughs> um, but as, that's, that's the route I would go, but I took a right on the sand run. And as I took a right, there they are. There's one house down there that has a lot of lights, and that's the one I wanted to show Judah. And so as we took the turn, it's, um, it's, it's one of those things where I'm like, oh, praise the Lord. that I, There's those lights. Praise the Lord that I just took this right. Is it something silly? Yes. But I verbally said, praise the Lord or thank you, Lord, for taking us this way. Um, it's just, it was just a reminder to me, like, hey, we, we need to give God thanks for those small, silly things along with the big things. I think oftentimes when it comes to when things are going well or something funny or whatever, we, we will forget or skip on giving God the praise and the thanks that he deserves. But he's involved in every aspect of our life, and we need to remember even those small, silly things to be giving thanks to. And I think that's that attitude of giving praise to him in all areas of our lives. Um, this in turn then, as we continue to read in verse 2, uh, mentions it will lead to serving the Lord with gladness. So having a joyful attitude, praising him, leads to serving him with gladness. And this is one of those things that I've learned um, after being here for almost 17 years is I, I don't want someone serving in a position unless they are glad or happy to be serving, if that makes sense. And it's, there, may get to a, there may get to be a point where 
maybe you have served in an area for so long that you feel called out of it, that you no longer feel called to be in it, um, or that gladness or that passion is gone or whatever. And maybe that is God telling you to move on. I'm not telling anybody to move on and stop serving somewhere. So don't take it that way. Um, but it's just one of those things where people have come up to me in the past and they say, Hey, I feel like God's not asking me to do this anymore. And, and at the beginning, I, I would start to freak out because I'm like, well, who's going to take their spot? But over the years, I have learned that you, you want people serving in those positions with gladness. You want people serving in those spots who want to be there. And God will provide someone who wants to be there. And yes, you do have times where me and Pastor Aaron will challenge you and ask you to pray. And it feels like we're manipulating you sometimes. That's not it. We're asking you to actually consider it. Um, and if, is, is this a place that God has me serving? And again, that, that service with gladness that, that comes from an attitude, again, a right attitude with God. Um, not Again, not every gift is the same for everyone, so everybody serves in different areas, but you need to consider and challenge yourself. Am I doing this? Am I serving with gladness? And it's not just talking about things within the church. That's just one of the things that came to my mind. But again, it's every aspect of my life. Am I serving God with gladness in every aspect of my, of my life? Am I giving thanks to him? Do I have that thankful attitude for everything I have and everywhere that I'm able to serve? And then verse 2 brings us back and says, Come into his presence with singing. And Warren Wearsby says this well. He says, worship leads to service, and true service is worship. I'll say it again. Worship leads to service, and true service is worship. So the challenge here is just make sure that you're always challenging yourself to have a joyful attitude, an attitude of thankfulness and praise to God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. So again, it's not just the singing part. It is in every aspect of your life. Next point I have for verse 3 is why. Why do this? Why have a joyful attitude? And the answer is obviously because the Lord is God. And that's verse 3. <clears throat> we see here a progression. Um, those who are going to make the Thanksgiving sacrifice have started off with making a joyful noise and they're making their way into God's presence with singing. Now the psalmist presents a reason why. Why all this fanfare? Why the worship with gladness? Why sing for joy? Why all this? Um, why in verse 4 do you enter his gates with thanksgiving? Well, because the Lord, he is God. Verse 3 says, know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. This section of the Psalms is a reflection, a great reflection of Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9, which I also have up there for you to follow along with me. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Basically, be reminded, be reminded here of who you worship. Who do you bring thanksgiving to? We need to know or acknowledge who you worship and why. Not only that, that God is the one, but that he is the one that made you and we are his. That, I mean, that's an amazing thing. He is the one that made you and we are his. You have nothing because of yourself. I mean, Another concept that we have a hard time with. You have nothing because of yourself. It is only because of God. I have a hard time with that and thinking of that. Oftentimes, again, as we get comfortable in our ways, we're comfortable with what we have in our living situations um, or life is going well, we, we oftentimes, again, forget to give thanks where thanks is due and that, and that praise to God uh, when it comes to those times when it's going well. 
<clears throat> we need to remember that we only have it because of God. So not only that, the Israelites are also in this psalm being reminded that they are his people. Um, but in addition, they're being told the sheep of his pasture. This imagery is one that continues on through scriptures, even into the New Testament, the Gospels, Hebrews, 1 Peter. Um, there's many more books and letters that have that imagery in it well. Um, as we move into the New Testament, is with Jesus as the great shepherd, um, a concept that we could go on forever preaching about. Uh, Wiersbe again hits it on the nail with this uh, phrase that he has, or this paragraph. It says, this, is, this verse is a simple statement of faith. Jehovah is God, creator, redeemer, and shepherd, and we are submitted to him. If the sheep do not submit to their shepherd, they will stray into danger. So again, why? Because the Lord is God. He is the one and only God. So going into the verse 4, the progression continues, and it says, make a joyful noise. Well, as the progression continues, we start with make a joyful noise. Have a joyful attitude. Why? Because the Lord alone is God. Now the worshipers have reached the gates as they head for their thanksgiving sacrifice. Verse 4 then says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Obviously, that's where we get that song from. Let him enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. Enter his courts with praise. A great song. Uh, my point for, for verse 4 is thank the Lord first. Thank the Lord first. Again, getting the right priority in our heads. Obviously, we want to show thanks to others, give thanks to others. But our priority should be to always give thanks to the Lord first. Uh, Spurgeon has a great thing to say on this as well. It says... So long as we are receivers of mercy, we must be givers of thanks. Mercy permits us to enter his gates. Let us praise that mercy. What better subject for our thoughts in God's own house than the Lord of the house? And into his courts with praise. Into whatever court of the Lord you may enter, let your admission be the subject of praise. Thanks be to God. The innermost court is now open to believers, and we enter into that which is within the veil. It is incumbent upon us that we acknowledge the high privilege by our songs. Be thankful unto him. Let the praise be in your heart as well as on your tongue, and let it be for him to whom all it belongs. Put the direction of the thanks where it belongs on God. These worshipers were coming into the Lord's presence. They were giving him praise and thanks. Praise the Lord because of his sacrifice, because of Jesus and his sacrifice, that the innermost courts are now open, as Spurgeon says. Give thanks to God first and foremost before anyone and anything else. I thank the Lord we don't need to travel to the temple. You don't even have to be at church to do this. We were able to give God thanks anywhere anytime and we were able to bless him anywhere anytime as well as the uh, the psalm says bless his name bless the one who blessed you first bless him in all circumstances again we we did that today in one of the songs bless the lord oh my soul bless the lord oh my soul so as you were singing that song were you just singing the words or were you actually in your heart truly meaning what is being sung? That goes for anything that we sing. <clears throat> Challenge for you and me as well. I think when it comes to this thankfulness and, and blessing the Lord in our life, it, it becomes hard depending on circumstances. And that's how it is for us. It shouldn't be that way, but that's how it is for us. And there's our circumstances often determine how thankful we are or our attitudes or where we are with God. Um, and not that it should, but that, that's how it is as we work through as we grow in Christ. And then verse, verse 5 picks up on that as we head into verse 5. And verse 5, the point I have for verse 5 is always be thankful. Always be thankful. The psalmist finishes for those who are heading to give their Thanksgiving sacrifice, stating more of who God is and his character as they're giving Thanksgiving. Verse 5 says, For the Lord is good, 
His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. <clears throat> we have a good, reliable, faithful, merciful, loving God who does not change. Amen? Why wouldn't we always be thankful for that? Why can't we, in any circumstance, find some sort of hope to be thankful for that? When you have a relationship with God through his son, Jesus, you know about the character of God. We may not always acknowledge it, but you know it. You know it through experience, through your relationship with him, and you know it because of God's word and what his characteristics that are listed in here. You know who God is. And one of them is, for the Lord is good. We have watered down that word so much in our language. <clears throat> How are you feeling? Good. How was your game? Good. That's, that's what I get from my kids sometimes. How was this? Good. I, I do it too. How'd you like that movie? Good. What was the best part? Good. I, I actually have had that with kids and Awana and stuff. How was your, uh, how are you feeling? No, what was it? It was just like that. It was a question you would ask and there's no way you could answer with good. And the kid would always answer, good, good. Here it is, for the Lord is good, meaning merry, pleasant, desirable, efficient, friendly, kind, morally good. We are to bring praise and thankfulness to God because of his goodness. Again, always be thankful. First Thessalonians 5.18, I believe I have that up there. Yep. It says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. The, this verse is part of Paul's final instructions, his conclusion for the believers in Thessalonica um, as he's wrapping up the letter to them. Uh, it's applicable to all of us as well as we look at who God is and what he has done for us. Should we not give him thanks in all circumstances? Of course we should. When you are going through rough times at school, teens, college, whatever, be thankful his steadfast love endures forever, as this verse says. When you're going through illness that seems hopeless, be thankful his steadfast love endures forever. When you're going through rough times at work, be thankful his steadfast love endures forever. Whatever it is, be thankful his steadfast love endures forever. How how can we be thankful in those situations, those times where we feel like there is no hope? You can be thankful because the Lord, he is God. He is merciful, loving, steadfast, faithful, and so much more, as I already said earlier. He created you, and you are his, as the psalm says. He gives us hope in a world that seems hopeless. He sacrifices one and only son for you so that you could spend eternity with him and have that hope everlasting. So no matter what the circumstance, good or bad, big, small, silly, whatever it is, always be thankful to God and hope that your light might be a light to others who feel hopeless. See, it doesn't just, it's not just about you in the psalm or whatever it is, or whatever we learn. As you apply what God's word is in your life, you are a light to others and then it applies to others around you. Are you a light to those around you? Especially as we head into this Christmas season, as it's on people's minds, I know it's more shopping, but as it's on people's minds, they're still thinking about Christmas and what it's about, and you have a chance to be that light to others, no matter what is going on in your life, to be thankful and to be um, that light of hope and be able to explain what that is to others around you. So let us remember as we, as we conclude here that it is, it's not just about a holiday where we have a thanks, a joyful thanksgiving. It is a continuous joyful thanksgiving. We are to always be thankful to God each and every day, even though at times it seems like it's a really hard thing to do. Um, I pray that that encourages you to, to head out of here. And again, not just take this psalm lightly. It is a quick 
five verses, but again, there's, there's a lot more in here that I didn't even cover, um, getting into what, what a lot of these words mean. Um, read through the Psalms. They're good. The Psalms are good, not just this one. There's more Thanksgiving Psalms as well that are able to apply to your lives. And again, be that light to others around you. Uh, as, I, as I close in prayer here, we are going to sing some more. So as the verses say, let's, let's make a joyful noise together here in a moment. Um, as, we, as we head into the next season of Christmas, we have some, some more songs to add towards that theme to sing as well. I love the words of one of the new songs that we have. Uh, it's a great song. So really think about the, the lyrics as we're singing and bring that praise and that thanks to God as you are lifting them up in praise. Don't worry about those around you. Sing to God and give him the praise that he deserves. Lord, we give you thanks for this day. We thank you for this time together. <clears throat> Lord, as this psalm says, Lord, we are, we are to give you praise and thanks always. And that is a hard thing to do. So as we head out of here, um, Lord, I pray that, that we would stay focused on who you are, your characteristics, um, and what you have done in our lives, that we would remember that and we would seek your word out and that we would read and be studying scripture that we, so that we can be reminded of who you are and give you the praise and the glory that you deserve. And Lord, that we would direct our thankfulness to you first and foremost, and then from there, that it could spread out to others and that we could be a light to them. Lord, we love you. We give you thanks for who you are. We thank you for um, this, this time that we had this week to be with others that we love and to be um, just to slow down. Well, Lord, I pray that we would take uh, those things that we've learned and be able to apply them the rest of our life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.